Initially, Dalton thought that the formula of water is HO. English classes with Pahul, sir. Bhaiya. <laughs> Dhanyavad. <laughs> A simpler way to read the question. Hello everyone, welcome to Catalysis by Vedantu. My name is Pahul and I am an alumnus of IIT Bombay. And today we are doing the second class of the basic concepts of chemistry. We are diving into the mole concept, the actual meat and potatoes of this particular chapter. We will understand what is the mole concept. We will understand the science and the history a little bit behind the atomic mass unit. And we will solve a lot of questions because this, at the end of the day, is physical chemistry. And if you're not able to solve questions in physical chemistry, then uh, you better uh, <laughs> go to a temple and start praying to God because <laughs> you won't be able to crack your examination if you don't know how to solve problems in physical chemistry, right? So that's what we'll focus on today. So the initial part of the class, the first 15 or 20 minutes will be the theory of the class. Uh, we'll talk about the mole concept, atomic mass unit, we'll understand where the mole concept comes from, what is the mole concept, what is a mole, what is atomic mass unit, what's the definition of it, we'll understand all of that and then we'll solve a bunch of questions related to that which will level up your brain. Cool people, so are we ready? Chalo ji ghuste. Why do I have a paracetamol tablet right in the beginning of the class? Because this class will give you a headache. <laughs> no, it won't. But yeah. Paracetamol tablet. So everyone has seen this Dolo 650 in uh, COVID. A lot of people <laughs> use this quite a lot yeah, to get rid of the heavy fever. So my dear friends, over here do you see that on this tablet, it says 650 milligrams of paracetamol. 650, 650, 650. So basically paracetamol is the chemical that this particular tablet has, the medicine, okay. And 650 milligrams of it is present. Hmm. Now if I have to write this in uh, grams, what will I write? Milli is 10 to the power minus 3. Yeah. So this can be written as 0. 0.65 grams. Do you realize that writing 0. 0.65 grams on the tablet does not sound very nice? See, you are a science student. I am a science teacher. We understand points and decimals and everything. But for the general public, 650 is a much easier number to pronounce, a much easier number to understand. Yeah. If a doctor has to say that uh, you have to take only, you know, 325 milligrams of the medicine, it's easier. If the doctor, you know, says you need only 325 milligrams, so take half the tablet. Okay, easy for everyone to understand. But if the doctor says you have to take 0.325 grams of the tablet, sorry. So point is that this unit, the choice of the unit makes it easier for us to understand what's going on. <clears throat> okay. We always choose units that make the number sound easy, as easy as possible. Okay, fine. If I have to write it in kilograms, then it'll be even worse, <laughs> right? 0 0.00065 milli uh, kilograms. Fine. So we choose the unit milligrams so that life is simple. Now, my dear friends, everyone knows that one atom is very, 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 very small. Hmm? Yes. So who came up with the idea of the atom? John Dalton. Before John Dalton, no one knew uh, the idea of the atom. And in the previous class, we've understood the laws of chemical combination here. Yeah? So all of those laws of combination were given before the ideas of atoms came about. Okay, the law of multiple proportions, the John Dalton law, that is the law where Dalton was like, oh, I think uh, there are atoms because everything is combining in a fixed ratio. So these simple ratios can happen only if there are uh, basic building blocks that combine in one, two, three units. Fine. So when atoms were discovered, no one could see the atom. We still can't see one atom. All the analysis that we do of an atom is mainly derived from the mathematics of what we do. Scientists did some experiments. They realized that, okay, this compound contains two gram of hydrogen, eight gra uh, 16 grams of oxygen in water. Yeah. So then they kept... Uh, taking smaller amount, smaller amount, smaller amount, doing some calculation, doing some division. And then they realized, okay, this is mathematically, this is the atom. It's a very small entity. 
should we try to define the mass of an atom in grams foolishness right it's so small we'll see the mass of one atom in grams now it is easy to determine because of modern uh, techniques in the laboratory but in old days it wasn't possible right so you had to define a way to say that okay mass of one atom is this unit okay mass of one hydrogen atom is one unit let's say so now everything will be talked about in that unit okay for example say that you know there are four people of different heights so let's say just giving a very very random example okay that this guy's height is height is 5 cm random example 10 cm okay 15 cm 20 cm so either i can write it in centimeters but if i don't want to use centimeters if i want to define a relative unit a relative unit i can say that okay instead of using centimeters let us say that this guy's height okay this much whatever it is i will call this one unit okay this is one unit now this guy's height is now defined as one unit so what is this guy's height now two units this is three units this is four units i have defined all the heights relative to the height of this guy so this is called a relative unit fine so in early days in the history of chemistry mass of one atom of hydrogen john dalton was the one to give this convention and john dalton said that one atom of hydrogen is basically equal to one atomic mass unit okay so this is what john dalton had said this was the very first idea used by john dalton okay because he realized because he used to do so many calculations okay all of this was because of his calculations did some experiment did some calculation did some experiment did some calculation so even back then he realized that all the other elements that are there say oxygen carbon etc etc their weights can be written as a multiple of hydrogen's weights initially dalton thought that the formula of water is ho he didn't know that there are two atoms of hydrogen in water he thought that it was one atom of hydrogen but then <laughs> you can read about more of that uh, somewhere else but eventually he boiled down to the idea that the mass of one atom of hydrogen is one atomic mass unit because he saw that every other mass that is getting no matter what compound he takes is a multiple of the hydrogen's mass simple multiple okay so oxygen is equal to hydrogen into 16 carbon is equal to hydrogen's mass into 12 so on and so forth theek hai so that is what he defined then people history happened okay history happened eventually you know when modern techniques were discovered when modern techniques of mass spectroscopy were discovered okay spectroscopy is a very complicated idea i did my master specialization in spectroscopy by the way and the final year project by in was in spectroscopy it's a very advanced idea you'll learn about it in college if you pursue chemistry so when scientists understood how to use mass spectroscopy to find out the exact masses of these small 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 atoms in grams okay for one atom in gram then they just agreed that since we breathe oxygen let's just say oxygen is the standard so they just took oxygen's mass as standard okay so in history there was a time when they said that okay oxygen's mass is equal to 16 one sixteenth of oxygen is equal to one atomic mass unit see they wanted to stick to hydrogen as a reference why because hydrogen basically is one proton and one electron as we know electrons mass is negligible you've studied this in earlier classes you'll again study this in atomic structure and chemistry i'll teach you that chapter also but the point is that hydrogen is basically one proton mass of one proton approximately is the mass of hydrogen practically speaking and all the elements are made of either protons neutrons and electrons a combination of them 
electrons mass is negligible protons and neutron mass is basically equal yeah protons mass is equal to neutrons mass so this is a good unit right mass of one hydrogen is basically mass of one proton so it's a good unit but just to <laughs> define things well just for a convention see hydrogen is a very small atom so even for mass spectroscopy it used to be difficult now it is easier but it used to be difficult when this idea was given when the standard was given it was difficult for scientists to you know uh, do the experiment on hydrogen and find out what's the exact mass of hydrogen so they could find out the exact mass of oxygen they knew that okay oxygen has uh, you know eight protons and eight neutrons in it right so we will say that 116th of the mass of oxygen is equal to one atomic mass unit so this was dalton's convention but later on people came to the idea that we can find out the mass of oxygen with mass spectroscopy hydrogen is very small to measure oxygen is still easier to measure so because by this time people knew that oxygen has you know eight protons and eight neutrons in it so they said that okay mass of oxygen atom divided by 16 equal to one atomic mass unit but my dear friends then you know what happened people started realizing that oxygen atom is not just oxygen atom it's basically a combination of isotopes of oxygen atom if i take a sample of oxygen from air most of it is oxygen 16 but there is some oxygen 17 in it some oxygen 18 in it here yeah? isotopes more neutrons fine so the thing is that eventually science scientists were like especially physicists chemists don't worry too much about this because for chemists so much precision is not important okay instead of taking uh, 10.1 gram in the laboratory if they you know because of this incorrect <laughs> definition of mass if they take 10.1003 grams doesn't matter to a chemist ultimately they just want a good amount of product to be formed but physicists want to deal with calculations inside the atom they want to do calculations for protons they want to do calculations for neutrons so therefore for them having an exact definition was very important so when physicists started realizing that this definition is also wrong because this is based on the mass of oxygen atom mass spectroscopy what did mass spectroscopy do we took a sample of oxygen from air put it inside the spectrometer it gave us the average mass of one atom but the point is that in that sample majority of the sample was oxygen 16 isotope some of the sample was oxygen 17 18 isotope as well so the mass was not that accurate so they wanted an even more accurate standard then some meetings happened etc etc so there is a very nice article okay uh, there is a very nice link of a conversation of why this exactly happened i'll share that link uh, in the pinned comment of this video make sure you read it it's not a part of your syllabus but you'll understand why eventually carbon was chosen as the standard okay it is just history and a little bit of mathematics involved over there okay so if they had to change the oxygen standard from average oxygen to oxygen 16 the variation in their measurements especially for chemists was too much when they chose the standard as carbon 12 the variation was not too much because when you take a sample of carbon from the earth most of it 98.99 something percent is carbon 12 the remaining uh, 1% is c14 okay so <laughs> ultimately you don't need to remember any of this idea ultimately because of convenience because of science because of arguments in history because of this and that idea again as i said the exact uh, details of it link in the pinned comment ultimately the convention was chosen as carbon 12 isotope so my dear friends one atomic mass unit is defined as okay it is defined as 1/12th okay of the mass of a carbon 12 atom this is the isotope of carbon which has 12 nucleons 
six protons plus six neutrons. Okay, fine. So eventually, with the uh, increase in the available technology, we were able to ascertain this definitely, and then now it serves as our standard. Okay. Again, why only this? Has a lot of history involved in it. Link in the comment. <laughs> you can read that history. So, ये हो गया. One AMU defined as one twelve the mass of carbon twelve atom. So now, my dear friends, now that we understand that this is how we defined it, this is why only carbon twelve. This is the link that I'll give you. Very nice. Just read it. So now let's do some mathematics. To do some mathematics, I'll warm you up. <laughs> okay, I won't throw you into the deep end immediately. Although I will do that when we solve some questions. Okay, I will throw you into the deep end, but <laughs> not immediately. Let's say I have a box. Okay, this nice gift box, and this box has chocolates. <laughs> If you guys have seen my earlier classes of mole concept, you know this is how I teach the mole concept. <laughs> box of chocolates method. So this is a box of chocolates. Okay. Now let's say that if I weigh the box, this box weighs 100 grams, and I know for a fact because I've eaten this chocolate earlier. I've bought this chocolate uh, from the market as a single packet of chocolate. That one chocolate is equal to 10 grams. So. my dear friends using this information how many chocolates are there inside the box how do i calculate it i basically take the given weight okay given weight or i should say total weight in this case divide it by the weight of one chocolate right total divided by the weight of 1 will give me the number that is 10 chocolates in this case and i have had some students <laughs> they comment sir but this method you know it's not very proper because see the box will also have mass no are bhaiya <laughs> at least this much imagination you can have in your life right <laughs> please some imagination be imaginative because most of the science is imaginary we observe but then we try to imagine patterns and then explain science point is imagination is important <laughs> in life use your imagination a little massless box if you can do entire physics without friction with all massless pulleys <laughs> and uh, strings that don't stretch or uh, don't contract and no air drag then i'm sure that you can imagine this box without any mass <laughs> i saw a comment of a of a guy on one of my earlier videos as this concept doesn't work because box has mass bhaiya <laughs> dhanyawad <laughs> so yeah total weight divided by weight of one chocolate give me the number of chocolates fine acha ji theek okay cool now my dear friends Let's talk about carbon once again. Carbon is our standard, right? Carbon, very nice. Carbon. Twelve. Why is twelve? Because it has six protons and six neutrons. That is why this number twelve. This number twelve looks very nice, right? Yeah. But right now, I can say that the mass of one carbon twelve is equal to twelve atomic mass units. That's how I've defined. The atomic mass unit, right? This is the definition of the atomic mass unit. One atomic mass unit equal to C twelve divided by twelve. Again, in daily life, if I, <laughs> you know, take some carbon, let's say I have a diamond mine <laughs> over here, and I pick up some diamonds, I can measure the weight of those diamonds in grams, not in atomic mass units. Atomic mass units are fine when I have to do calculations on paper. In real life, I have to deal with grams of substances isn't it this glass has some water in it i can measure the weight in grams can i start counting how many atoms are there <laughs> and try to find out the weight in atomic mass units no so people 
this is good for mathematical analysis of chemistry but we need to relate it to grams also so basically what we are trying to do as a scientist is that we are trying to find a relationship between this 12 atomic mass unit and this 12 gram we want to find a relation over here okay ultimately these are just two units of weight hmm? of mass <laughs> in chemistry we don't worry too much about mass versus weight but yeah these two are just units of mass right i can convert grams into pounds i can convert grams into kilograms etc etc right so i should be able to convert grams into atomic mass units so now we need to build a relationship over here that relationship is what takes us that relationship is what takes us towards the mole concept so my dear friends what we now need to do is basically imagine that this box weighs 12 grams and this box contains carbon lots and lots of carbon atoms in there lots and lots of carbon atoms oh <laughs> and this box has so many carbon atoms that overall it weighs 12 grams carbon box is weightless once again <laughs> so 12 grams of carbon now my dear friends this is the total weight and this is the weight of one carbon atom in grams how did i measure this in grams this is people with the help of mass spectroscopy what is spectroscopy how to do spectroscopy you will learn later in college very complicated idea so mass of one carbon 12 atom is given total mass is given total mass mass of one chocolate how many chocolates are there how many carbon atoms are there so the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon is equal to 12 gram divided by 1.992647547 into 10 to the power minus 24 sorry 23 23 grams grams a gram cut gaya obviously you will get a number over here can you tell me what this number is use your calculator don't worry so if you do the accurate calculation of this particular number it will come out to be 6.022140761076 into 10 to the power 23 it's a very huge number by the way so yeah if you expand that this is such a huge number people it's so huge it's beyond your imagination okay because once tens 100000 10000 100000 uh, million 10 million 100 million billion 10 million 100 billion <laughs> it just keeps going this is where your billion stops these many carbon atoms are present inside one box of carbon atoms that weighs 12 grams my dear friends this number is just a number okay we'll always uh, represent it in a much simpler manner that is 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 okay this particular number my dear friends is called one mole okay this is also known as the avogadro's number okay so this wasn't given by avogadro okay this was just uh, discovered by scientists eventually when they were doing lots of calculations amedio avogadro the fancy italian guy you saw in the previous class is just named after him okay as a sign of respect towards him fine so avogadro's number it is also represented as number of avogadro n subscript a number of avogadro avogadro's number so what is this how is it defined this is basically atoms okay carbon atoms in 12 grams this is the number of 
carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon. What is the mole concept over here, people? Hmm? What is the concept now? Let me try to give you an idea of the mole concept. See, the thing is, carbon, what is the weight of one atom of carbon? 12 atomic mass units. Yeah, this is for one atom. Carbon is equal to 12 grams for one mole atoms. Atomic mass unit for one atom. Same grams for one mole atoms because this is how we've defined this number. We wanted to find a relationship between these two. We found the relationship. <laughs> okay. Whatever is true for atomic mass unit for atoms, same is true in grams for moles of atoms. Okay. You can keep changing this. If I have one atom of nitrogen, what is the weight of nitrogen? Everyone knows the weight of nitrogen. 14 atomic mass units. One atom of nitrogen weighs 14 atomic mass units. So my dear friends, similarly for nitrogen, 14 grams is the weight of one mole nitrogen atoms. Okay. This is the mole concept. Similarly, what's the weight of hydrogen? One atomic mass unit, one gram of hydrogen atoms is equal to one mole of hydrogen atoms. Okay. Oxygen, 12, ato sorry, 16 atomic mass units for one atom. 12 grams of oxygen will have one mole of atoms. How much is one mole? This. See, dozen is 12. Score is 20. What is dozen? Just a number, right? What is mole? Just a number. 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. This is what we have to remember. This particular data, my dear friends, is empirical data. Can Do you know what is the meaning of the word empirical? Empirical means... A lot of you are saying, sir, simplest means empirical. Empirical means experimental. Okay, when you guys write empirical formula, which we will write eventually in uh, two, three classes from now, it means that we did some experiments, we got some weights. Using these experimental weights, what's the simplest formula that we can come up with? Experimental formula automatically is the simplest formula because that's all we can determine from that weight. Just the simplest ratio, right? So, <laughs> empirical basically means experimental. Okay, English classes with Pahul sir. So yeah, this data is experimental. Everything else we've defined. Okay, everything else we have defined on our own. We have defined that mass of one carbon 12 atom. This number is equal to, okay, 12 atomic mass units. So my dear friends, from here, can you write one atomic mass unit? How much is one AMU? And this number of 1 AMU, I had shown you in the previous class also. Remember the first, uh, the first thing that happened in that class, that 0 0.000000, <laughs> yeah, 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24. That is one atomic mass unit in grams. One atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams. 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 24. Okay, so the thing is that all of this, even though I've spent around half an hour talking about it, it might sound very complicated. And that is fine because this is a new concept for you. So much mathematics involved, so much history involved, so many ideas about convention and experiment, etc, etc. So initially, for almost every student, this chapter, this concept feels a little difficult, but I assure you that with the help of some questions that we will solve now, 
this concept will become much better ingrained in our brains. The more questions you solve with physical chemistry, the better you'll understand physical chemistry. There are no two ways about it. Okay, so even if right now it feels a little cluttered in your mind, you're like, sir, samaj nahi hai, sir, what the hell are you doing? If that is the case right now, don't worry. Slowly and steadily with questions, we'll understand it. Once you sleep over this idea, your brain will try to understand it better. Once you read it again from the NCRT, your brain will be like, oh, I think now it makes sense. Okay, so don't worry if in the first go, you're not able to grasp it entirely. I don't want to be the kind of teacher who cuts out information and just gives you, beta, this is 1 AMU, this is 12 gram, ratlo, I don't want to be that teacher. I want to tell you why and how things are happening the way they are. And that takes a little bit of time to digest. So now people, let's try to solve some questions. Calculate the number of atoms in each of the following samples. The first one is 200 atomic mass units of helium atomic mass units so my dear friends whenever things are in atomic mass units you have to think about it in atoms okay whenever you read amu atoms first thing that should come to your mind when you read amu is atoms okay so 200 amu of helium helium what is the mass of helium four atomic mass units yes Mass of one atom of helium is four atomic mass units. I'm sure you remember this from earlier classes. If you don't, you're like, sir, in examination, will they give us molecular mass? Will they give us atomic mass? <laughs> Most of the times they won't. Some of the times they will. But the thing is that during the two years of your preparation, you will solve so many questions of physical chemistry that you will automatically remember a lot of atomic masses especially the important ones so don't worry so four is the atomic mass of helium so how do we calculate the atoms of helium all you have to do is write total weight that is 200 atomic mass units divided by the weight of one hmm? Weight of the box of chocolates divided by the weight of one chocolate. Total helium divided by the weight of one helium. So, 200 divided by 4. Kitna aaga ji? How many atoms are there? 50 atoms. Fine. Done. Chalo. Ye ho gaya. Now, let's do the second case. 3200 atomic mass units of oxygen. Simply likhenge ab. Atoms of oxygen are equal to 3200 AMU divided by what's the weight of one oxygen atom? We've seen that <laughs> a little while back. 16 atomic mass units. Kitana agaji? 200 atoms. My dear friends, do you see that over here the units are getting cancelled? Mass unit get cancelled by mass unit. So ultimately you are left with a quantity, a unitless quantity. Number of something is a unitless quantity, right? Yeah, atoms is not a unit, of course. 200 number of atoms. Number is a unitless quantity. 46,000 atomic mass units of sodium. Bada hai simple hai yaan pe. 46,000 divided by 23. AMU say AMU cancel. What you are left with is? 2,000 atoms. Fine. I hope you've written it down in your notebooks along with me. As you know, I do not give out PDF notes because I want you to make notes because your efforts will ensure your success. Chalo. Next question. Calculate the number of atoms in each of the following samples. <laughs> a lot of our questions will look like this for some time. Now, my dear friends, we are talking in terms of grams. So when we are talking in AMU, atoms. When we are talking in grams, you think of moles of atoms. AMU, atoms. Grams, moles of atoms. Or simply think grams, moles. So over here, what do we do? Total, <clears throat> or let's just write the mass of one mole 
oxygen atoms. How much is this equal to? We just wrote it a little while back. Please see in your notebook also. This is 16 grams. Yes. I can write it in a short form also. I can simply write mass of oxygen is equal to 16 grams per mole. Same thing. Mass of one mole of oxygen atoms is 16 grams. What is one mole? 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. That's just the number. Mass of oxygen is equal to 16 grams per mole. So my dear friends, same analysis that we have to do over here. Number of oxygen atoms is equal to total weight divided by weight of one unit or weight of just one quantity. So instead of taking one atom over here, we are taking one mole atom over here. Simplified, okay? With the mole concept, life is simplified. So over here, how will we write total weight? Kitna de rakha? 1600 grams and divided by 16 grams per mole. Grams and grams cancel. Mole goes at the top because mole is what? Mole is a number. Wherever we write this mole, 16 grams per mole, this is what? This is a number. 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Yes, this is a number. So if you take care of the units properly, automatically you will get the correct answer. So, kitna ho gaya pe? This is equal to 100 mole of oxygen. You don't need to simplify it further. If you want to simplify it further, we can do that. 100 mole is equal to 100 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. This is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 25 atoms of oxygen. <laughs> if you want to go to that length. Fine. So now simply, second one. 32 kilograms of sulfur. 32 kilograms is how much? 32,000 grams divided by, what's the weight of sulfur? 32 grams per mole. Again, 32, I've told you now. For later, you should remember it. Try to, okay. So this is equal to 1000 mole of sulfur. Sodium, you know the weight already. 2.3 kilograms is equal to 2300 grams. Yes, divided by 23 grams per mole. So, whatever was in AMU for one atom, same in grams per one mole. Okay. <laughs> I've been <laughs> talking a little loudly uh, because of excitement. So yeah, tongue slips here and there. Pardon me for that. But yeah, 100 mole sodium. Now let's move on to more questions, more calculations. <laughs> okay, more samples. And all we have to do is once again, calculate the number of atoms in each of these following samples. Okay, so 52 moles of helium, they're already given. <laughs> you don't need to calculate anything. 52 moles of helium is 52 moles of helium. This is how much? 52 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms. Karthar, <laughs> calculate your wish. 52 U of helium. What is this U, sir? U is basically equal to atomic mass unit. Okay. So, some scientists say that we should not call it atomic mass unit. We should call it unified mass because the same unit is used for molecules also. So, atomic mass unit sounds like it should be used only for atoms. U, AMU, same thing. Okay. This unit is also known as one Dalton. One AMU, one Dalton, one U. Same thing. Unified mass, atomic mass unit, Dalton, same thing. Okay. 52 U of helium. Very simple. 52 divided by 4 for one atom. Aage answer. Theek hai. 52 grams of helium. Again, what will you do? 52 grams divided by 4 grams per mole. Okay. 
फाइन ठीक है जी गॉट इट थर्टीन एटम्स थर्टीन मोल ऑफ एटम्स चलो आगे बढ़ते हैं नाउ माई डियर फ्रेंड्स मोलिकुलर मास दिस इज अ मोलिक्यूल ऑफ सीओ टू दिस इज वॉट द मोलिक्यूल ऑफ सीओ टू लुक्स लाइक कार्बन ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन ऑन आइदर साइड ओके सो हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट द मोलिक्यूलर मास मास ऑफ वन मोलिक्यूल ऑफ सीओ टू यार ऑब्वियस सी बात है ना ऑब्वियसली दिस विल बी इक्वल टू मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दैट इज सिक्सटीन प्लस मास ऑफ कार्बन दैट इज ट्वेल्व प्लस मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दैट इज अगेन सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन प्लस ट्वेल्व प्लस सिक्सटीन दैट इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर now this is why scientists say that don't write atomic mass unit over here because atomic mass unit for molecule atom molecule <coughs> so just write u <laughs> but you can write amu also that's absolutely fine so i can say that for one molecule the mass is 44 u i can also say that 44 grams per mole of co2 molecules if i have 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of co2 the weight will be 44 grams theek hai same relation amu grams molecules moles of molecules fine now my dear friends this is fine for cases where i can say that okay this is a molecule but you know what happens in ionic compounds in ionic compounds it is not possible to isolate one molecule new information for you you will read study more about it in solid state in your 12th class i am taking classes of solid state on this channel <laughs> so yeah that's a happy coincidence but the point is that for ionic compounds you know it's a very beautifully arranged 3d uh, structure okay what's happening over here is these small ones are sodium positive ions and these bigger spheres are chlorine negative ions okay so this is how they are arranged in space so you, over here you can't isolate one molecule okay because sodium positively charged sphere will attract chlorines from all directions so it is surrounded by chlorines yeah every chlorine is surrounded by sodiums can you see this chlorine surrounded by sodiums because it's a negatively charged sphere at the end of the day so it attracts from all directions so the point is that for ionic solids for ionic compounds it is not possible to take out one molecule so technically speaking for ionic compounds nacl for instance nacl is just the simplest formula okay nacl is not the molecule because a molecule can't be isolated over here new idea for you you can still call it molecular mass <laughs> a lot of people will a lot of questions will but technically speaking nacl is the simplest formula of this arrangement of crystals okay and therefore we will call this formula mass okay instead of calling it uh, molecular mass for nacl we will call it formula mass for nacl theek hai ji so my dear friends what is the formula mass for nacl for sodium it is 23 for chlorine it is 35.5 so add karenge kitna aa jayega 58.5 units for one formula or 58.5 grams per mole of nacl again for mole we can write because one mole is 6.022 to 10 to the power 23 formulas of nacl fine formula mass same thing just some technicality is different <laughs> after this uh, slide everyone will still call molecular mass okay instead of formula mass they'll still call it uh, molecular mass anyway very beautiful structure does anyone know what this structure is called very beautiful structure this structure my dear friends is called chloro xylenol
there is a very uh, common thing that we use okay and this is the main constituent of that common chemical we use quite a lot okay detol okay in detol the liquid detol the original liquid detol that is used in hospitals when you get a bruise when you apply it on cotton that detol liquid okay not the soap so the detol liquid the original detol antiseptic liquid main ingredient in that main active ingredient is chloroxylenol okay <laughs> antibacterial antiseptic etc properties so how do we calculate the molecular mass of this this is one molecule of chloroxylenol now this is organic chemistry for you in 11th class you might not know how to understand or interpret this structure so let me try to let me try to simplify the structure for you so basically in the ring that you see there are six carbons okay something like this fine alternating double bonds are there now on the top carbon you have oxygen attached to hydrogen then you have just one hydrogen over here okay the hydrogens are not shown here okay the hydrogen not shown here but since carbon has valency of 4 hydrogen has to be written okay this is over here hydrogen is implicit it is automatically assumed over here carbon with three hydrogens okay then over here carbon with one chlorine then over here carbon with three hydrogens and over here carbon with one hydrogen so my dear friends this is the structure of chloroxylenol just for fun i am showing you the structure and all you have to do now is find out what is the molecular mass what's the molecular mass of chloroxylenol my dear friends this is the first homework for you okay there will be uh, there will be another homework in some time but it's like the first homework for you pehla homework okay cool chalo let's move on to the next question <laughs> calculate the number of atoms in each of the following samples okay 50 200 sorry 5400 unified mass of glucose 5400 grams of glucose people what is glucose c6 h12 o6 <laughs> calculate the weight of glucose the weight of glucose is basically if you calculate 6 into 12 plus 12 plus 6 into 16 this will come out to be 180 grams per mole or i can write 180 unified mass per molecule so how do i calculate how many molecules are there 1400 divided by 180 <laughs> over here since there is grams you will get moles of glucose isn't it very simple no rocket science clear people kitna aa jayega yahan pe 30 molecules of glucose over here what will be the answer 30 moles of glucose how do i interpret 30 moles 30 into 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of glucose fine u that is atomic mass unit directly you will get molecules grams you will get moles simple how many oxygen atoms are present in a tablet of aspirin weighing 360 mg people what's the weight of aspirin please calculate this is also 180 grams per mole so my dear friends how do we calculate how many oxygen atoms are present in one tablet of aspirin basically the point is over here that the point over here is in one molecule of aspirin 
we have four oxygen atoms okay in one molecule four oxygen atoms cool this is the basic piece of information now rest of it is simple okay molecules of aspirin are equal to how much total weight total weight kitna de rakha how much is the total weight that is uh, 360 milligrams 360 into 10 to the power minus 3 grams always take care of the units milligrams 10 to the power minus 3 grams okay and divided by the weight of one aspirin 180 grams per mole total weight of aspirin in grams divided by weight of one mole of aspirin in grams okay so how much does it come out to be this is very simple okay so this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles of aspirin 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles molecules of aspirin okay if you replace mole with 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 basically yeah so now my dear friends how many oxygens will be there four times this number yeah so 4 into 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 uh, minus 3 mole oxygen atoms if you want to convert it into exact number just replace the mole with 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 done ye bhi ho gaya the more questions we solve the better we get at it okay next one acha sawal not very difficult by the way same thing that's happening just the numbers look a little bigger little more complicated so people this particular question let me make it a little more fun <laughs> this is a homework question for you so this is your second homework okay first one was the chlorosilinol one this is your second homework take it down please take a screenshot have to figure out what's the answer very very simple by the way no rocket science over here just simple calculation chalo ye ho jayega then the next question nice if a mole were to be defined as 3 into 10 to the power 24 instead of 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 if we don't say that the mole is 6.02 to 10 to the power 23 but we say that the mole is 3 into 10 to the power 24 then what would be the mass of one mole of argon atoms mass of argon is given 40 han ji how do we do this now sounds very confusing okay a lot of students over here go into the definition of the mole and then they're like okay sir now should we change the definition of the mole and then this and that do one thing pause the video over here try to do this question and unpause and see the video when you want me to solve it okay pause the video over here and try it out a simpler way to read the question <laughs> this is what the question is asking okay the language is complicated question is just asking what is the mass of 3 into 10 to the power 24 atoms of argon ये तो आसान है ना भैया इसमें क्या ही मुश्किल है मास ऑफ 6.022 पॉइंट जीरो टू टू इंटू टेन टू दी पार्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम ऑफ आर्गन इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी ग्राम्स वन एटम इज फोर्टी यूनिट्स वन मोल इज फोर्टी ग्राम्स ओके सो फ्रॉम हियर आई कैन राइट मास ऑफ वन आर्गन एटम ओके मास ऑफ वन आर्गन एटम इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू टू इंटू टेन टू दावर ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम्स ठीक है सॉरी ये ग्राम्स लिख दिया मैंने यहां पे 
एटम्स आना चाहिए यहाँ पे सॉरी फॉर दैट टाइनी लिटिल मिस्टेक सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू टू इंटू ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री एटम्स ऑफ आर्गन फोर्टी ग्राम्स सो वन एटम ऑफ आर्गन इज इक्वल टू दिस मेनी ग्राम्स ओके दिस हैज टू बी यूनिटलेस क्वांटिटी राइट ग्राम्स ओके सो सिमिलरली मास ऑफ थ्री इंटू टेन टू दी पार ट्वेंटी फोर एटम्स ऑफ आर्गन इज इक्वल टू मल्टीप्लाई दिस नंबर ऑन दी अदर साइड ऑल्सो फोर्टी इंटू थ्री इंटू टेन टू दी पार ट्वेंटी फोर डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू 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 टेन टू दी पार ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम्स दिस इज योर आंसर सिंप्लीफाई कर दो इसको यहां बच गया टेन approximation okay this is what 3.3 something will be a little lesser than 3.3 because this number is bigger so approximate this as 3 so approximately this is just an approximate answer you please do the ek accurate calculation approximately 120 grams that's the answer okay fine no rocket science over here so understanding the language of the question is important now over here do you see that this question is simple if you know the mole concept you know how to solve the question but to understand the language of the question is a little tricky so the point over here is that you have to solve as many questions as possible in the next 2 years for your preparation of jee neat j mains j advanced bits CET, whatever exam, okay. The more questions you solve, the more questions you look at, the better your brain will become at understanding questions. Now, last question of the day, and people, this once again is a homework question, okay. And what I will do is, see, today you're watching the class. If you are watching it at the day of the release, today you're watching the class at 7 p.m. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay, I will take this as the question of the day. As you know, Pulkit sir and I are doing question of the day series. Morning six a.m. Oh, sorry, I have eleven a.m. written down. Tomorrow at six a.m. Okay, if you are watching this class at the day of the release, next day at six a.m. Question of the day. I will solve this for you. Some tasks for you are comment the answers of the homework questions. Three homework questions for you: chlorozylinol, the hemoglobin. and this uh, nitrogen wala question so comment the answers of these uh, homework questions in the comment section whatever you can answer watch the stoichiometry video okay so the link for this i'll also add in the pinned comments fine so pulkit sir and i have made a very nice video explaining the basic idea behind stoichiometry please make sure you watch that video before the next class before because if you don't watch this video then the next class will be uh, bland okay i'll try to put this video in the next class also i'll make it a part of the next class so that uh, you know students who are watching the class only not watching the video can understand so those of you who have watched this video already you can skip that part in that video get the idea fine so just watch this and in the next class we'll deal with stoichiometry we'll solve a lot of questions of stoichiometry fine so people that was today's class and <laughs> around 1 hour of class so i hope you understood the history the logic and the mathematics behind the mole concept we've solved a bunch of questions more questions will be there in ncert i am also trying to arrange for some uh, dpps some tutorials so my team is working on it our vedantu team is working on it and they will compile some nice uh, tutorials for you guys and as soon as they are available we will give them to you on a telegram group okay this is the link of the telegram group t.me/v_vap if you enjoyed my different way of teaching uh, sometimes i throw you into the deep end of the swimming pool so that you can figure out how to swim yourself <laughs> I hope you are enjoying that way of teaching. It's different from the others, and this trust me, 
will force your brain to grow leaps and bounds. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, stay subscribed to the channel, make sure you comment with whatever I have I've asked you to comment. And if you have anything other, uh, you know, other doubt to ask me, or if you have anything else that you want to comment, please make sure you leave that comment down below. Hit the notification icon. I will see you in the next class. And the next class of this chapter, the stoichiometry class, is going to be on Friday at 7 p.m. Coolio. Chalo dosto. See you later. Bye bye. Take care.